It's Pete from Cheap Homesteading here, and today's the day. The day I'm going to start making my screen bottom boards. Um, I have decided to uh, continue with screen bottom boards. Um, I don't know how effective they really are, um, but they can hurt. So if there's something that it can hurt, but and people have proven that it has worked, um, I think I'm going to continue with it. The whole theory behind the screen bottom board is when your bees come into the front of the hive, they have mites on them. And when they come up into the hive, uh, the rest of the bees will try to clean the mites off. So when the mites fall, they'll fall through the screen and they will fall to the bottom of the ground or wherever and they can't get back up into the hive. So the whole thing is if, say 20% fall through, I don't know if that's a real number, but say 20% fall through, they're not in your hive breeding. So that makes a whole lot of sense to me. But these things are a little labor intensive. They're not hard to make, but they are a little labor intensive. So we're gonna start on this. So let's go. So there you go. I'm back to the scrap wood again. Uh, scrap wood does save you a ton of money. But it does take just a bit more time to build anything. But they love nails and pallets. But free is my kind of price. And I definitely wouldn't have been able to uh, build up my hives as much as I did if I didn't make it myself. So Here's a trade-off, eh? It's really important to make everything interchangeable, but don't confuse that with identical. Uh, because the way I look at things, you look at the wood you have and you choose the best possible plan of attack to make your uh, bottom board or whatever you're making. Uh, so basically I just need this dimension and that dimension to fit my bee box, a standard Langstroth hive. So basically that's all I have to do. I don't have to do anything extra. So in the pallets, I don't have boards that are this thick. I am gonna cut everything for my uh, front and back board out of that dimension lumber. Uh, so I don't have to rip down other kinds of wood or whatever, but it's basically gonna be interchangeable, but it won't be identical. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut these pieces and the end pieces. We'll cut a bunch of them. Okay, so I need boards that are 15 and a quarter inches long, so I'm going to go cut some of them. Since I am not organized enough, I can't find a pen anywhere, so we're going to use a nail. Actually, I use nails for most of the stuff because I have no idea where my pens or carpentry pencils are. That's just the way I am. There we go. We'll cut that and then use that as a template. check to see if it matches up so look at that always check because even if I measure sometimes you know the worst happens so it's all the right length so I'll cut a bunch this length and it, you could put fences I always tell myself I'm going to and then I, I did some years <laughs> going to keep cutting until we make a few of these uh, bottom boards. Okay, so there's the front and back pieces. Here's enough side pieces. I have to cut the uh, dado uh, slots for these to fit into, but uh, they are cut for four bottom boards. 
I am not going to cut this little strip of wood until I know my final dimensions compared to my side pieces and my front and back board. Uh, it just makes it easier. You don't have to try to figure out the dimension. You can just measure the dimension. Okay, you don't have to spend a lot of money on tools. Uh, this I got at a garage sale. It's an adjustable dado uh, blade uh, from Sears. It's a craftsman. And there's different dimensions you can put uh, your set your dado to so it's very easy you don't have to remove it off your uh, saw and it didn't cost very much I, for, I don't know what I spent for it but I didn't spend a lot and I did a lot of my uh, beehive making this is all I've used even though I bought another dado blade um, from another garage sale that was an awesome price I still go to this because it's easy you can change dimensions very easily so we're gonna go uh, cut the slots in the side rails my table is really, really bad. Uh, it's all bent. The center uh, guard around the blades are bad. So instead of throwing it out, I kind of use it as my uh, dado uh, table saw. I just put a piece of plywood and I've nailed it to a uh, two by three and then I screwed it to my fence. So there's no real issue with the levelness or anything of that uh, and it's handy to have a table saw that that's all it is. Let's try this. Okay, so when your first cut um, is to set the uh, dado, so you want to use a scrap piece of wood. On my scrap piece of wood, I think the depth is perfect. The problem is it doesn't quite fit what I measured. Uh, that happens a lot with scrap wood because, uh, I mean, it's all slightly different dimension, even if it's the same pallet. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with that, but I think this is okay, I'll show you. Okay, so now we're here and you got the dados cut and they're not going to fit every board perfectly because each board is slightly different. They don't use premium lumber for crating. So I used to cut down the whole side which took a lot of time because this, I don't have a big, big table saw. So then I started cutting just the depth that would fit in the slot. So we knew that would be the right size uh, to go into the sideboards and you could put the part that wasn't perfectly flat to the bottom and you wouldn't see it. Basically I'm going to rip down just the edge of this piece of lumber on both sides so it's more dimensional, it's the right dimension. So I'll do that to all these boards and then we'll see if it fits. So when you use scrap lumber, you have to do things very, very differently because the boards aren't the same. It's just the way it is. So now, 
that fits perfect. That's what you want. A nice snug fit. Right here, I'm gonna get a knife and we're just gonna scrape that off so that um, looks a bit nicer. Some are worse than others. So there we go. So now we've got a rough fit. We have to make sure this is square. We're gonna nail it. And then we're gonna find out what dimensions these strips of wood have to be to fit very nicely. You can glue them. I, the only thing I glue is the frames. I really believe frames are very important to glue. I find, I don't know, I don't find these are that as important. The wood kind of swells up and jams in there. The nails hold. I don't see as much of an advantage of gluing all these bottom boards. And there is enough nails in these things that they sh surely they should hold. But if you want to glue it, go right ahead. But frames, but frames definitely have to be glued. Or they'll be coming apart on you and you it won't be a happy day, that's for sure. So now you have it sitting on the table. You want to make sure it's square. That's pretty darn square. Because those cuts are square, so when it's all nailed together, it should be true. Now, so now we got to cut these pieces. And it's exactly 16 and a half inches. Okay, let's see if it fits. That is the right length that's going to uh, fit nice and snug. Okay, so now that fits in really nice. Go to the other side. Give her a little bit of a tap. The easiest way I find to nail those is just set it on the vise like that. Uh, the hardest thing is to know where the center is. You just go along. Okay, here's the screen bottom board. She may not be perfect. There's nails kind of going out sideways here and there. It isn't a thing of beauty, for sure. But it's functional and it'll be the same as all the other. Uh, high so they'll be totally interchangeable. Now we're going to put in our end piece that blocks off the back of the hive. We'll flip it over, get a few nails and nail it down. So there we go, that's the woodworking part of uh, making the screen bottom board. Okay, so now we're going to cut some uh, wire mesh to fit the bottom. Uh, it's basically one eighth hardware cloth. Um, don't use house screen or anything like that, it's not strong enough. 
and if you set the hive on the ground and there's a stick, it'll poke through that easy. It won't poke through this. So we're going to start cutting this. We cut a piece of ply with the size of the screen we want to make. And that will give us, as we crease it over, that will give us a nice straight edge. So it won't be all wobbly, it'll look all professional-like. So uh, that's the easiest way i found. So then I just put a weight on it, just to hold it down. And then you make sure there's a little bit of an edge all the way around. Okay, so now you fold up the edge on the seam. Okay, so now you've got nice, crisp edges to fold it over. If you don't fold over the edges, um, it ends up that the ragged edges start pulling out because you staple it, you get some force on it, and then it just yanks the wire out. But if you fold it over, it's to a much stronger spot on the wire, and, um, and then it seems to be fine. And it looks great. So when my first time I did it, it didn't quite look like that. It looked awful, and I wondered, how did those guys do it? But that, uh, that is exactly how they do it. Okay, so now that fits in there perfect. It looks great. Now I'm gonna go with the staple gun. So here, so you can see, I just have a normal staple gun, and I'll go around and staple it down. Okay, so I got two of the three sides done. Now it's important to try to push this way when you staple, so you can add some tension to the screen. Okay, now we'll go across the front. So now I just go back and give it a few hits because I find the staple gun doesn't put them down really nice and hard and solid so I just give it a little help. That's how I make my screen bottom boards. Uh, it may not be uh, as professionally done as some of those big uh, B equipment manufacturers, but there's no way I can afford to get them to make all my equipment for the size I'm wanting to go to and everything. And the bees really don't care anyways. So for that, it looks pretty good. The screening is probably the most expensive thing on this part of my beehive because I have to purchase the screen. You can't get that used or anything. Uh, but it's very easily done with scrap wood, like pallets and that. Just the size of the pieces and everything is not so difficult to find pallets that fit that. So, so you guys have a good one.